Okay, everybody, we're talking about the power of emotions today and using visual imagery to heal conditions in people who are diseased. Glenda Cedarleaf is here with me today, and she has been nice enough to do this interview. And she is a clinical hypnotherapist and guided imagery, imagery pa- practitioner. She's also a certified heart-centered hypnotherapist with the Wellness Institute. And her healing surgery CDs are now sold at the Mayo Clinic Medical Store. So that's very, very exciting, and I'm so glad that she's here to speak with me today. And I need to ask you a question that I know everybody's going, what, what the heck is guided imagery? So please tell us about what exactly that means. I'm glad to do that. Thanks, Terry. <laughs> um, guided imagery is a really simple but powerful way to help you move into a relaxed state. And in that state, you can be most receptive to healing images and insights. And this helps you deal with your challenges from a place of strength and inspiration. If I were to ask you to close your eyes and imagine right now biting into a juicy apple, you would start connecting with your senses. The taste of the apple, perhaps the smell of it, or the feeling in your mouth of biting it. And the visual of an apple, red or green or golden. So when you do this, you're entering into the realm of imagery. And when you're using your imagination, your unconscious doesn't differentiate between what's real or imagined. So like if you were to imagine biting into a lemon, you might start to salivate or or actually feel that sort of tart taste in your mouth. Well, in the same way, when we worry, we're also practicing imagery. But, of course, that's what we might call negative imagery. But Mm -hmm. it's still very powerful. Like we could um, think about a painful experience and start to feel that pit in the stomach, you know, the Uh tension there or maybe the tightness in the chest or the throat. So the purpose of guided imagery is to strengthen your ability to reprogram your brain for relaxing and healing images. So that's a kind of a... Well, that's a perfect explanation of it. Um, that was perfect because I just needed a snack. And um, <laughs> um, okay, so my next question is: How important is the step of controlling emotions and using guided imagery to the overall healing process for somebody? I just don't think enough people understand how important it is. And I just need to interject one one thing here. I. I coach a lot of people who are sick and the people who have the toughest time with healing are the people that are constantly um, afraid of something. They have lots of fear and they also have lots of unresolved emotional issues. So I just want to know what your thoughts are as far as controlling emotions and using some of this imagery for, to help people. Um, Yeah, well, I I think it's really important, and there's plenty of research out there now that shows us there's really no separation between the mind-body connection. Mm -hmm. So many times we'll have our thoughts sort of be on automatic pilot, and if those automatic thoughts are related to memories and difficult experiences that become, you know, these looping, negative, self-critical, fearful thoughts, that affects our body. It raises our cortisol level, affects our immune system, and our ability to process information and many other functions in our body. So we have to learn how to settle our nervous system. But we all know that. It's a whole other thing to know how to do it. And that being caught in that fear loop, in a way, I say it's not so much about controlling the emotions as it is about first fully, fully expressing them and fully understanding what that core fear is about and Lyme disease the struggle of living with it is going to trigger all kinds of fear Mm -hmm. and often I'll see with my clients that how they feel about their Lyme how they image Lyme disease is often mirroring other experiences in their life that felt Mm -hmm. you know like they were being attacked or that they were betrayed Um, you know for each person it's unique And so to be able to heal some of the reactivity to those earlier experiences frees up the energy to then be able to 
have a different relationship with the Lyme disease to be able to have, um, gosh, this, this is the part where it gets so hard to explain it until you actually <laughs> do this. Really, okay. really hard. But but when when there isn't all that um, kind of lifelong uh, building up of fear and anger about other experiences in life, and that part gets healed. It uh-huh. makes it easier then to deal with the Lyme. And it makes the body then more receptive to, you know, the treatment protocol. Right. Focusing on moving forward and moving on. Right. I like what you said about freeing up because that really is exactly what it is. Um, you're freeing your system up so that it can focus on the things that it needs to focus on. And how can you focus on anything if you're dwelling on all these issues that have happened to you, whether it's um, all these injustices that you felt happened to you, or if you've dealt with some really crappy people in your life? I mean, who hasn't? Um, <laughs> but those emotions, uh, especially with dealing with other people, I mean, those are things that are very difficult to get rid of. And I know that we'll talk about that a little bit later on. I want to say that um, you can get Glenda's uh, free a uh, free guided imagery tour at the Tick Slayer website, and the the link to that free audio is www.thetickslayer.com forward slash visualize, and that's V I S U A L I Z E. So the tickslayer.com forward slash visualize and you can kind of get a little taste of what she's talking about as far as her guided imagery tours go. Let me ask you another question. Um, I want to know about some personal stories of people you've worked with because I do know that you work with people one-on-one besides just doing these um, CDs. I love the fact that you have the CDs out because they're extremely affordable, and they're, they can be used over and over and over again. I do know that you make custom CDs for people who are dealing with a very specific issues that they need to work on as far as issues that they need to remove or emotional blocks they need to remove. But I would like to know what some of your, if you have any personal stories that you can share as far as people that you've worked with one-on-one, and how has this guided imagery helped these people with uh, their their ability to heal and, and move on with their treatments? Yeah, well, I think in relation to what I was saying earlier, you know, most of us don't want to have our negative thoughts, and most mm-hmm. of us want to be over with our fear. And if we could just change our behaviors and stop thinking about it, we would. Right. And so my focus is to work with the unconscious. So when somebody comes in and says, you know, I'm so angry, um, understandably so, this is now happening in my life, and I'm so angry, and I, you know, I can't think about anything but my fear now. Uh huh. And as I talk with the person and I get to understand, um, again, what, how exactly do they perceive this disease, and we start working at that deeper level I have a specific hypnotic protocol that I was trained in that I use with my clients. And we find that there are these, you know, core experiences that they are actually repeating. That the over and over. The trauma mm-hmm. is happening over and mm-hmm. over again. And so they're feeling re-traumatized with it. Mm-hmm. And when we work at that deep level with the, with the core experiences, and they can change their relationship um, at an unconscious level, it's not like their mind that their uh, memory is erased, but they have less reactivity. Then changes happen, and I've seen wonderful things happen with with mm-hmm. my clients. Where I mean, some of them were expecting to go on to disability, and uh-huh. instead they're working; they're back to work. Um, yes, I was there at that. I was there at one of those points in my life too. <laughs> I remember yeah. it very well. <laughs> yeah, That's good. It's terrifying. Mm-hmm. To feel like you you you've lost that. So um, it's a you know it's each person is unique and and how they work with it. Some people their primary focus is to to work with their you know physical pain mm-hmm. around Lyme and to be able to use imagery to help them again not be as reactive to the pain so that mm-hmm. they're not getting caught up in the story about the pain or about right. the symptoms. Right. Right. For other people, mm-hmm. they really want to focus on 
you know, instead of focusing on my, my body's being attacked, I am now going to focus on my body is releasing. It's releasing the bacteria. It's releasing the spirochetes. It's releasing mm-hmm. all that I no longer need. And that's emotional, physical, you know, the whole range. And um, I started seeing people with Lyme because um, a Lyme specialist started referring her clients and her patients mm-hmm. to me. And um, what I would, would hear from her was that, um, that her clients were saying, um, you know, I'm, I'm feeling much more positive about myself and, about, and a hope for myself. And as they reconnected with hope, their own hope, mm-hmm. um, they were more responsive to the treatments that she was giving them. And so she, you know, she wrote um, about the, the CD that, the CD helps lead people down that secret pathway to healing from the inside out. Yep. About coaching the immune system, triggering the, the repair systems, and helping people with Lyme know they're not alone in this journey. And so um, that's been a very rewarding experience of being able to help people see that this relationship with their mind is also impacting their experience of their body. Mm-hmm. And one woman wrote, um, and I love this, she said, what I found most important from our meeting was the idea of thinking about the healing energy growing and pushing out the spirochetes instead of vicio- viciously attacking them. Mm-hmm. And then she, she wrote to me, I left your office feeling lighter and freer, and that strange, rusty, panicky knot in my chest is gone and still remains so. Mm-hmm. And I'm surprised at how much I look forward to meditating each evening. And I think what she's speaking to there is, as we know, when you're really upset, you it's a, a hard to quiet your mind. Yes. You know, to be open. And so I think imagery is an easier thing to do than meditating because you're guided. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I, I, going back to the whole positivity <clears throat> issue, which is extremely important in giving people hope, the whole idea about writing the book, uh, The Tick Slayer, was because it's empowering and I didn't know how you could even get over a disease unless you do empower yourself. I don't know if people actually do get well if they constantly view themselves as victims and that they're constantly fearing all of this unknown. I hear this all the time about it's all these what ifs that people put out there. I'm sick, but what if I can't ever get healthy? you know, this, I'm having this specific symptom and what if it never goes away? It's always what if, what if, what if, if, if people could just focus on the empowerment approach, which is I am going to get healthy and finding like what it is that you want to see yourself doing in the future, because that's actually a part of guided, that's a part, I wouldn't call it guided imagery, but it is imagery. It is seeing yourself living a certain way, feeling a certain way every day. And when you can hold on to that, and we talked before um, a little bit last night, actually, and you were saying that, in the, you know, you, you were referring about the fact that I was just so focused that seeing myself in the future, this is how it's going to be. I wasn't, I wasn't giving this disease any chance but to leave my body. There was no chance for it to stay around. I think that was something that's really important to mention. Um, I do know that you started all of your guided imagery and helping people heal because you had a personal experience, and I would like you to share that, if you would. (laughs) Yeah, and when you were talking about the victim, I mean, I know that place, and I'm always so cautious to, to, because, when I was in that place, if somebody were to say to me, well, you're talking like a victim, I, I, I would be angry because they said that, because I'd say, well, yes, I have been. So I know that place, mm-hmm. but I also know, just as you said, if, if we're saying I'm not going to get better and we stop and think of how that feels in our body, mm-hmm. or we say I'm going to get better and how does that feel on our body and how many times throughout the day, are, which channel are we on? Mm-hmm. And then what is that saying to our body? Mm -hmm. So for me, you know, it started back, I would say, when I was eight, and I had a a really life-threatening kidney infection. I ended up in the hospital for several days, and it was traumatic being in that hospital. I'm not going to go into all the details, but that was kind of the initial thing. And then 
was on a lot of antibiotics for a long, long time and developed some more chronic uh, adrenal and thyroid issues. Mm -hmm. And then later when my son was uh, two years old, he was diagnosed with insulin-dependent diabetes type 1. And 